Where the hell did that come from, WWE? This was the best Raw episode in, I would say, years right now. This is Raw Review. So we kicked off the show with Braun Strowman and his new BFFs, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. And they had a message for the whole WWE Universe. They are ready to take on anyone. Raw is their show and they are the pack. This obviously led to none other than The Shield coming out. After last week's attack on them, they were ready for the pack and they came out. And it was an absolute brawl. Baron Corbin had to get the whole locker room to separate all six men from destroying each other. And that still wasn't even enough. Braun Strowman, McIntyre, they were taking out everyone. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. They, they didn't care if you heel, face, doesn't matter. If you were in their way between Braun Strowman and Dolph Ziggler and McIntyre, they were coming for you. And it was brilliant. It literally... We got straight into a commercial, came back, and The Shield were getting arrested. This is a really fantastic, strong opening segment. There's no real dialogue. It's just pretty much two factions who do not like each other. One who's got Braun Strowman, one of the most popular wrestlers of all time, who's now turned heel. And The Shield, the hottest faction since, I would say, DX, to really come out. And these guys really were all out. It was amazing. It was fantastic to watch. A really strong episode, opening next segment. So I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Our first match of the night was a tag team match. And I'll just say this now, guys. Get used to me hearing it. Saying that because you're going to hear tag team matches a lot on this episode of Raw. But they were a lot of good ones as well. But the first one wasn't one of them. It was the Bella Twins returning to Raw after three years of retirement. And how was it? It was awful. It was bad. And I do I do feel sorry for Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan, who were their competitors. Because Brie Bella and Nikki Bella just didn't look that good in the ring. They looked really, really rusty. And especially Brie. She made a, quite a lot of botches in her matches. Especially with a suicide dive. Twice where she messed up. Not the strongest return for both Bella Twins, but they got a massive pop. And, you know, for a lot of fans, these are two of the biggest women's wrestlers for a long time. So, you know, for a lot of fans, this was a big deal. For me, it really wasn't because I've never been a Bella fan. Sorry, AJ Lee was always better. But this is just typical WWE. And the first thing they said about them when they returned was, Ooh, Total Bella's been renewed. That's the only reason they're back on in the ring. Fantastic. But yes, they had a match. They won. They had that big celebration and the fans went crazy. Because it was a you know a re return to WWE superstars returning. I can't judge it too harshly. But their in-ring skills were awful. So you're going to get a 4 out of 10 Bella Twins. You need a... You need to sort yourselves out. Next up, we got another tag team match. Yeah, this time round, we had a new team. That's right, we had the Ascension taking on the brand new team of Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. That's right, if WWE creative team have no idea what to do with two really talented wrestlers, let's just put them as a tag team and hope that they get over. Did they get over? Slightly, Chad Gable was entertaining as hell. I'm guessing since he's left Smackdown Live, he's now somehow converted into a face because that's how he's being portrayed right now. And Bobby Roode just kind of like sharing the light with him. Who knows? I don't understand this. But the Ascension got to be the heels where they are. The heels now on Raw. Really weird. They're not heels, by the way. They're fantastic at playing very silly baby faces. Heels, they're not that good. But... That was the match. It was quick and it was easy and Chad Gable and Bobby Roode got the victory. Bobby Roode kind of getting used to, you know, 
tag team and the Ascension did actually cut a promo against them which is fine if this is their first feud as a tag team the Ascension it's not a bad one to go for uh, but yeah it just felt like WWE creative team was just squashing two wrestlers who have nothing going on right now and just hoping that they'll form a good tag team so I've got to give it a 3 out of 10 sorry guys now things start to really pick up on Raw we first started off with Elias singing about the city's all he's in. He always does a really good segment where he tries to sing a song about the city he's in, but this time around he couldn't finish the song because he's in the hometown of none other than Alexa Bliss, and she tr it looked like she was about to be like a babyface kind of return home, but no, Alexa Bliss went actually lies. Everything you've said is very much true. Look at this hellhole. I was so glad to leave it. Before Elias could continue playing his song, Ruby, uh, Ronda Rousey and Natalia came out. And we had the match of Natalia versus Alexa Bliss. How was it? It was damn good. You know, Alexa Bliss is a good wrestler. N Natalia is fantastic as well. And it was a very decent match. Better than what we got with the Bella Twins. But Natalia looked coming off with some fantastic classic Natalia moves. Where it looked like she was about to pick up another victory. But no, Alexa Bliss used uh, Ronda Rousey's own finisher. The armbar to submit uh, Natalia. And this was interesting. Natalia really sold it. Her selling, fantastic. Uh, then Ronda Rousey came in. Then uh, Alicia Fox and Mickey James kind of tried to get her and then uh, finally Alexa Bliss took out Ronda Rousey before Ronda started beating her up again. Uh, this is most the most we have seen uh, Ronda Rousey look weak. Uh, WWE have done a really good job here. The numbers game really getting involved but really good match. I really liked that it was Alexa Bliss using Ronda Rousey's finisher to beat Ronda's best friend in WWE. So for that I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. Next up we would we were getting a Raw Tag Team Championship match and it was the B team to supposedly to take on the Revival who beat them last week to get this opportunity. But before the match even started there was a backstage segment where uh, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler were talking to Baron Corbin who said look I can't change the match, you two want to be in the match, there's nothing I can do and Dolph went and Drew went hey how about if something happens to Revival when could we be in the match? And Byron's like, yeah, of course. If anything happened to them, you would definitely, I would have to definitely change my plan. What did that mean? It meant that Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre took out the revival, which I feel really bad for because they've really earned that opportunity, in my opinion. Um, then it made the match the B team versus McIntyre and Dolph and they won it quite easily. Yes, the B team looked like they were going to somehow win this, but it wasn't going to happen. McIntyre, Andrew, now the new Raw Tag Team Champion. Very good little bits. I like the whole backstage stuff. Even though the match was really quick, getting a title change is always fun. It's always exciting. So I'm going to give this segment a 7 out of 10. Next up, we had... The Authors of Pain taking on some local talent and that w local talent got squashed. There you go, a a AOP won with two seconds. It, it felt very quick. But the biggest thing was Drew Maverick was, Drake Maverick is now the manager of AOP. Rockstar Spud is now the manager of AOP. That is awesome. WWE are using him what brilliantly here. He's still the GM of 205, he still says it, but he has new clients. Kind of like a Paul Heyman kind of character right now, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I really like this. I Everyone was like, what, what, why is Maverick in, in AOP gear? What's going on? What's going on? And he goes, I am now representing AOP. And I thought, oh, this is brilliant. This is well put together. I like this. New management. AOP needed that. They need a, a, a strong talker and Drake Maverick is the guy. So for me, I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. Now we get to the best part of the whole night. Shawn Michaels returned to Raw. Yes, uh, Shawn Michaels was giving his view on Undertaker versus Triple H at the showdown down under match. Last time ever. My God, 
and how was it? It was Shawn Michaels at his absolute best. HBK, the heartbreak kid, Mr. WrestleMania, Mr. Main Eventer. Oh my, he is the he is one of the best wrestlers to ever exist. And he just he talked about how his own leg like legends who he respects and stuff put the Undertaker over Triple H. And he goes, look, Triple H is still the game. He's still the man. He still has that extra lot, you know, level to go. Undertaker doesn't have the streak anymore. He doesn't have that. And that's why I think Triple H will win. And when he said that. The Undertaker arrived, that's right, The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels were in the ring once again. This is like history guys, if you've not seen these two fight, just check them out. But if you're watching this channel, you've obviously seen Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. And it was a hell of a match, and it's pretty, it was a hell of a promo, it was just like, word, it was the battle of words, and it just worked. Undertaker cut a fantastic promo, pretty much, I'm not going to ruin it, check it out, watch it guys, it's worth seeing, but I'm just going to say this, Undertaker pretty much called HBK a coward, and the only reason he truly goes for Triple H, because he's hoping he will get revenge on Undertaker for retiring him, how awesome was it, this was a fantastic segment, it's getting a 10 out of 10, it's getting a 10 out of 10, it was good, obviously we had a fantastic segment, we had to fit, go really Weird. We had another tag team match where we had the Hug and Boss Connection taking on Dana Brooke and Ember Moon, which was a bit weird because Ember Moon and Dana Brooke uh, and, you know, S Sasha Banks and Bailey are all faces and they're all friends. And why did we have the tag team? I don't know, but it pretty much meant that S Sasha Banks and Bailey won. No surprise. A bit of a shame. Ember Moon had to be on the losing team, but you know what? She didn't get pinned. That was Dana Brooke. But this was all to tell the story of Dana Brooke having another match yet again, having Titus Worldwide, aka Titus O'Neil, shouting too much information, making her lose her concentration, and costing her the match. And that meant that she got angry with Titus Worldwide, and she, I think she quit Titus Worldwide. Interesting, this this is good. It means Dana Brooks is actually getting some character development, which I'm happy with. This, you know, because she is, she deserves character development. So for me, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Next up, we had Bobby Lashley being forced to go to anger, well, Jinder Mahal's spiritual anger control thingy majigga, aka Baron Corbin handed him a letter, performance review, said Bobby Lashley's too angry, he needs to control his anger. You gotta go and see Jinder Mahal, spiritual leader. Okay, that's fine. Jinder was there trying to make him, and Bobby Lashley's like, "Ah, oh, my man," and he's trying to concentrate, trying to concentrate. Kevin Owens returns. That's the best bit about this whole segment. It was awful, uh, but at least Kevin Owens returned, and it was fun. It was actually fun to see Kevin Owens come back. Everyone was shocked. He power bombed Bobby Lashley onto the corner of the ring because. That's the hardest part of the ring. Did you not know? Michael Cole tells you that every damn week when Mike. Yeah, so <laughs> it was fun. It was great to see, you know, Kevin Owens back after he quit last week. Weird. But a bit too soon, in my opinion, for Kevin's return. But it's kind of interesting. Is he going to become like more vicious? Is he going to attack people for no reason? We'll have to wait and see. But yeah. Just don't know how to mark this. I'm, I'm just going to give it a 5 out of 10. 6 out of 10 because I have Kevin Owens in it. And this moves us on to our main event. Which was supposed to be Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin. Which was meant to be their final match. But because Baron Corbin is such a busy, busy acting general manager. He couldn't make the match. So he announced it will be Braun Strowman taking on Finn Balor. And of course, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler will be in Bronze Corner. Of course they are. They are now BFFs. Did I mention they are BFFs? So, yeah, it was a... I gotta say, if you want to make Braun look like a damn good heel, make him beat up probably one of the nicest, light baby faces on the company, Finn Balor. And it works. It does work because everyone who were chanting for Braun at the start of the show were booing him like hell when he started beating the crap out of Finn Balor. But saying that, Finn Balor does what Finn Balor always does and it makes the match look more like he could win it in a significant way. And that's by cho 
choking Braun. Yes, he tried to use a strategy to beat the big guy. He was so close a few times to doing it. Obviously, Braun being the bigger, stronger, sweatier big man, which Vince McMahon really loves, obviously meant that Braun was going to win quite soon. And he did. He squashed Finn and then Drew McIntyre and, and Dolph Ziggler and... Braun Strowman started beating the crap out of Finn Balor. Next thing we know, a police siren turns up and the shield return. And before the shield can come in and take on the pack, it looks like the whole back locker are there to stop the shield yet again. But it's not. It's all the heels from the locker room come out and attack the shield. That's right. Not all baby faces came out. All the heels came out to take on the the shield and they destroyed the shield. Um, I don't know if this was all planned by Braun Strowman, but it was very interesting. It was fantastically put together. Uh, by the end of it, they were just a, a destroyed mess on the end. For this, all this fantastic match, really good booking to make Braun feel more and more like a damn, damn heel. And with the shield being absolutely destroyed by a massive amount of wrestlers who are all heels right now. This was well, well written. So for me, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. And there you go, guys. That was Raw for this week. There was a lot of tag team matches. There was a few matches which was just bad or just lazy. But the big bits, like the Shield being arrested, the, you know, HBK and the Undertaker in the middle of the ring. I never thought I'd see that again. I mean, the main event, that all... Just destroying of a shield was fantastic. For me, it's really well put together. One of the best Raw episodes I've seen in such a long time. So with that all in mind, I'm giving this episode an 8 out of 10. Well done, Raw. You did a really good job. Uh, what did you enjoy about Raw this week? Leave it in the comments below, guys. And if you do like our videos, please like, subscribe, press the notification button to keep up to date. And if you want to follow the channel on Twitter, you can do. It's at Smack Talk YouTube. And if you want to follow me on the old Twitter, it's at Boise88. And I'll see you guys next time on Smack Talk Wrestling Reviews.